With a great pleasure, I now call upon His Excellency, Declan Kelly, I'm really sorry, Declan, to make his speech. Thank you very much indeed, Sarah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here again at the St. Patrick's uh, of Salangor, St. Patrick's uh, Evening Ball. First of all, I want to uh, welcome my good friend, the distinguished High Commissioner of uh, Britain, Simon Featherstone, and his wife, Gail. And of course, uh, Fiona, what a fantastic speech, short and sharp, like the kick from an ass. And Maggie Terrett, the president of the Penang Irish Society. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the occasion for a long speech, and you're very lucky because you're not going to get one from me this evening. But I would just like to say a few things and make a few points. This is my fourth occasion to do this dinner, and I've been ambassador in Canada, I've been ambassador in Australia, I was consul general in California. So I do know a little bit about the Irish abroad, and I have to say, this is without doubt a truly spectacular event. What makes it so is that it's not done by a huge committee, it's a small number of very dedicated people. I'm paid to do this, this is my job to represent the countries, but these are all people who are very busy, have their own day jobs, etc. And they do it all for the love of their country. And I have to say, I really take my hat off to them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Throughout the world over this weekend, Irish people abroad will be celebrating their heritage. Because of our history, of course, as uh, Fiona mentioned, there are some 70 million people throughout the world who have Irish heritage. And being in those countries, I experienced St. Patrick's Day in places like Sydney, Melbourne, and Toronto, Ottawa, you name it, all around uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles. And we are not unique, and I, I never want to be chauvinistic, but there is something about the way the Irish like to celebrate their heritage, like to tell people how much they love their country, how they come together when they're abroad. And as the Irish ambassador, I have had the great pleasure of representing the country, as I say, and it is a great, you get a great sense, a, a great feeling of, you know, I am really proud to represent people who take such a deep pride in their country, and also who have a pride in telling other people about their culture, whether it be in music or dance or literature. So in that sense, being an Irish ambassador is, is, is a very nice thing in terms of the way the culture is celebrated abroad around St. Patrick's Day. As somebody mentioned, I think Fiona made a very brief reference. We've had a difficult time at home in the last five years, that is no doubt. And in fact, the first dinner I did here was in uh, 2011, and we had just at that stage entered what was known euphemistically as the EU IMF program, otherwise known as the bailout. Well, I have to say that three years later, Ireland is the first country that had that issue to exit the bailout last December, and we are truly, well and truly back on track. Ladies and gentlemen, as an Irish ambassador, Irish ambassadors are not politicians, we're public servants, so I don't represent any political party. And I accept that round of applause on behalf of the Irish people, because they're the ones who did the job. Some of the figures have really been impressive in the last two years. When we went into this crisis, we were losing 1,600 jobs a week. In the last 12 months, we created over 1,200 jobs each week. We are borrowing money now at less than we did before we went into the crisis. In fact, last Thursday, we borrowed a billion. We sold bonds for just under 3%, quite a remarkable figure. So we really have turned this around. As I say, it's down to some very tough decisions taken by the government, and it's also down to a little help from our friends in Europe and it also our friends across the water. It's at times like this that you know your friends, and it's times like this that for all the issues involved, it was very nice to be part of a European Union where you had something to turn to. And we see what's going on at the other end of Europe at the moment. I think we can all feel glad that in Europe we all live in countries where whatever else our differences, we do share the rule of law, and we have common values of human rights, and we do look after each other. So to that extent, 
I have to say we in Ireland have been very, very proud of what we've achieved in the last three years, very thankful that we are very good friends in Europe. Mentioning those friends in Europe, there's a little thing, there's a little game going on in Paris today, and my two sons, in fact, are there. Now, as I said, my good friend Simon there at the table, and we do get on very well. This is not put on nowadays, but we will diverge slightly later this evening, <coughs> depending on what happens in Paris. But, um, ladies and gentlemen, as I say, I promise at the beginning not to make a long speech, just to say to everybody involved, it is really great to be here. Before I finish, I just want to say that sitting at the table with me is Sister Enda. And if anybody is the embodiment of what it means to be proud of your fellow citizens, it's Sister Enda. In the three and a half years that I've been here, the, the, number, of people, the number of people who have said to me, you know, that they went to school with Sister Enda, that she did that for them, she did, you know, she, she helped them along in their lives and their careers. And that is a very, very nice thing to hear. Uh, it makes you feel very proud of your country and it makes you feel that you belong to somewhere very special. So ladies and gentlemen, I know the representatives of all the other societies are here this evening. I hope you'll forgive me for maybe sounding a little bit chauvinistic tonight. But after all, it is St. Patrick's weekend and I am the Irish ambassador and you'll have to forgive me this evening. Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and